Hi everyone. Friday. Oh God, it's got to be the 12th, I guess. Glad to be with you. It's March. And we're going to look at a passage today that has not one, but many promises. And I'm going to try not to get bogged down, but I don't know if I have it in me. <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Romans was most likely the last letter, the last book that Paul wrote, which means he's mature in faith. He's had a lot of life experience. And so his theology has developed to a degree that it hasn't in his earlier writings. I mean, that, that's just normal. We grow with, uh, we are seasoned with age and maturity. And so when we catch up with Paul in the book of Romans, it is highly theological. And chapter 8 might be the quintessential theology of Paul. <laughs> We're only going to pick up a couple of verses here, but they're rich and deep. As I read, what I want you to listen for is how many times Paul says in these two verses that we, who are in Christ Jesus, have Christ living in us. So, as I read, what you're paying attention for is how many times Paul says, Christ is within you. Let's see if you get it. You can count on your fingers, uh, and one hand will do. <laughs> and Christ lives within you. Oh, I should tell you where I am. Romans 8, verses 10 and 11. And Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. The Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, lives in you. And just as God raised Christ from the dead, he will go give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. Wink, wink. <laughs> How many did you get? I counted three. This is really important. When we see a concept or a word repeated in Scripture three times, the, the writer most likely is using a traditional literary uh, device to bring emphasis to this concept. So, here, Christ lives within you. Paul said it three times. He said it once with Christ. He said it the second time with Jesus. And the third time, he says the Spirit. Jesus and Christ and the Spirit. All the same. This is the spirit of Jesus Christ that lives in us. And so this is the emphasis. And I would say this is the main promise of chapter 8, verses 10 and 11 here in Romans. But there are many other promises. Let's just drop down it in some of those. And the promises, these other promises, are not the main ones, um, are, have equal importance but not what Paul emphasized. And they only happen because Christ lives in us. And so, what are these other promises? First, even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life. What, is, what kind of life is this? This is a promise of eternal life. And that life is made right because you have been made right with God. So you know, that's another promise. We have been made right with God. So our body will die because of sin, but we have life, which well, I guess that's a promise too. So even though your body will die a physical death because of sin, the Spirit gives you life, second promise, and because you have been made right with God, third promise, we've been made right with God. Let's go to the next sentence. 
the Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, lives in you. Reiteration of the, the beginning promise. And just as God raised Jesus Christ, here it comes, another promise from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies. So that's a bodily resurrection. You know, sometimes we think about the resurrection as a spiritual resurrection alone. And gosh, I can tell you, there have been dozens, maybe even hundreds over the years of theologians that argue this point. Is it a bodily? Is it a spiritual? Well, quite clearly, Paul makes it really crystal for us that we will have a bodily resurrection. So he will give life, eternal life, to your mortal bodies. Now think about this. If we are going to share in a resurrection like Jesus, meaning if we are going to be raised in a resurrection like Jesus, which we hear all the way through Scripture, we know what Jesus looked like after his resurrection. Was he some kind of floating spiritual light that moved in and out of places? And, you know, it's kind of like uh, the, the force where you can kind of see it here and there and in places. No, that's not a spiritual resurrection alone. How, how was Jesus raised? Well, guess what? When the women went to the tomb, his body wasn't there. When Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene first and then later to the apostles and to 500, that's an astounding amount of eyewitnesses uh, in a matter of 40 days, by the way, before Jesus ascended. How did he appear? Bodily. Thomas put his hands, his fingers in the, in the holes in Jesus' hands and in his side where he was pierced. This is a bodily resurrection. So this promise is a bodily resurrection. Remember, because Christ lives in us. And this will have happen to us by the last and fifth promise, the same Spirit living within you. The Spirit in us. Lots here, much to think about. And I would encourage you then to ponder Romans 8, verses 10 through 11, over the weekend. This is rich. It's deep. There's so much more than our short amount of time can get to. And so, consider, Christ lives in you. Jesus lives within you. The Spirit is living within you. And what a promise that is. Let us pray. God, thank you. Thank you for Fridays, for time off, for celebrations over the weekend and whatever we're going to be doing for rest, renewal. Use, Lord, the time we have this weekend to help us to be renewed, restored in our bodies, in our minds, and in our faith, in our spirits. We give to you, Lord Jesus, Sunday as our Sabbath, a time to worship, a time to, to give to the Lord. Help us to be mindful and committed to Sunday as our Sabbath, as we worship together, as we find spiritual rest, as we declare to, your, declare to you our praises and your worth. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Boy, what a great week. Love you guys. Miss you. We'll see you on Sunday at 10 o'clock. And if it's before noon, you can still make a reservation to be here in person. We're starting to see more people, which is really a gift, as uh, many are finding vaccines. And uh, we're still practicing good and safe habits, spraying down and wearing our masks and distancing and washing our hands. Uh, but we would love to see you here. If not, we're going to be live streaming on our YouTube channel. 10 a.m. on Sunday. So however you're with us, we just hope that you are. See you on Sunday. Bye-bye.